If you're in North Carolina, listen up. Last week, the Port City Daily dropped a bombshell article on what's going on with our water standards. First, let's break down the article. So Peter Castagno outlines the continuous lobbying and potential conflicts of interest in North Carolina's Environmental Management Commission, or EMC. The EMC is an appointed 15-member board that reviews and instates rules for the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality, or DEQ. For context, the DEQ requested that the EMC begins its regulatory process for creating PFAS standards at its May 10th meeting. PFAS are long-standing or forever chemicals that persist in humans' bloodstreams and create potential detrimental health risks, which include, but aren't limited to, cancer, infertility, and developmental delays. PFAS standards would further regulate the amount of contaminants allowed in drinking water in North Carolina to better protect us from these health risks. Instead of starting the regulatory process, the EMC denied the request, stating that the economic impact of the proposed standards need to be studied more. This is where the North Carolina Chamber of Commerce comes in, or NC Chamber. On April 22nd, the Chamber sent a letter to the Secretary Beiser of the DEQ asking, and I quote, to delay any action on surface and groundwater standards until further studies are completed because the Chamber is worried about the financial cost of companies complying to these new standards. The Chamber is also worried, and I quote, on the negative impacts on the business community. To be clear, the DEQ already completed economic analysis on these proposed standards and the community health benefits outweigh these financial costs. Here's what makes the situation complicated. The Port City Daily investigated the EMC's financial disclosures and at least three of the EMC commissioners have shares worth at least $10,000 in companies that have lobbied against the PFAS standards or pay lobbying dues to organizations lobbying against PFAS regulation like the NC Chamber. We, NCLCV, argue that these investments create a significant conflict of interest for these commissioners whose priority should be ensuring that we have safe and clean drinking water. So here's what we did in response. NCLCV wrote a letter to Cornerstone members of the NC Chamber asking them if their chamber's advocacy to delay water standards aligns with their values as a company. Do these companies that include healthcare-focused organizations like Blue Cross Blue Shield and Wake Med believe that cancer-causing chemicals in our water is okay? We look forward to hearing their position on what their chamber is actively fighting for. We encourage you to read the full Port City Daily article and follow us to stay up to date on these findings.